All right, today's date is Wednesday, November 8th, 2017. This is your iState.tv iNews Digest. And uh, as you all know, my name is Paul Gordon. And if you don't know my name is Paul Gordon, well, shame on you. So in this iNews Digest, we're going to talk about an actual Russian boogie bear. No welfares for the NFL. The Yemen war is not a war. Are mice? Voluntarists? And more on this issue of iNews Digest. Let's get right to the top story there. Russia arrests libertarian activists at an Adam Smith forum. Now, I wrote a little bit more on this topic, which you can find on iState.tv, but I'm just going to highlight the key parts in the iNews Digest. So in this story, about two dozen libertarian activists are being, uh, well, have been arrested at an Adam Smith forum in Russia. After hours in a police bus, most of the activists were let go, but some are still being held. In addition to the people arrested at the forum, there were 376 more libertarian activists arrested in 36 other cities across Moscow. And, of course, predictably, the charges against these activists include conspiracy against the state, unauthorized rallies, and criminal con commerce conspiracy charges, the same type of charges Western states use against their dissidents. So, when I express extreme skepticism at the whole Russia boogie bear narrative, bear in mind that Russia, if you live there, is star more, far more of a threat to your safety and freedom than any other state the Russian media might attempt to have you fear. The NFL is crying after Congress threatens to cut off local bond funding. So the new tax bill contains a provision in it that would prevent local governments from using tax-exempt public purpose bond bonds to fund NFL stadiums. The NFL countered that the bonds are a good investment because NFL stadiums bring prosperity to the communities around them. Uh, of course, the question remaining is this. If the stadiums are such a boon on local economies, then why not raise private funds? Why take a gamble with taxpayer dollars? Whatever the motivation behind Congress's targeting of the NFL to lose some of its corporate welfare, uh, it makes no matter. Never mind to me. One less corporate welfare dollar spent is always, always, always a good thing. So House GOP protects Trump's war in Yemen. So, yeah. This, this, this story is a little bit tricky. In a recent bid to force Congress to vote on whether they actually want the United States participating in a war against Yemen with their theocratic ally, Saudi Arabia, U.S. House leadership exercised some parliamentary and linguistic gymnastics to prevent the resolution, House Concurrent Resolution 81, from seeing the light of day. Just before the vote, on November 1st, House leaders pulled a parliamentary trick by voting on the resolution, resolution in the Rules Committee, which removed its privileged status. This move meant that the resolution was no longer guaranteed to be given an actual floor vote. House leaders asserted the war in Yemen hadn't risen to a level that it would invoke the War Powers Act. Instead of a vote on the resolution, the House will conduct a non-binding debate on Yemen on November 13th. That's right. This is not a war. Mice tell us a lot about human governments. So a recent study from the Center for Cognition and Sociality suggests that mice are far more inclined to follow peacemaking rules rather than resort to violence to settle disputes. Why? It's, 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 it's almost as if the mice intuitively, maybe even biologically, understand that volunteer agreement is far superior to forced action. And this, by the way, might be a study that we will explore in more detail, possibly in a future iTalk. So, so be sure you stay tuned to iState.tv. And go to iState.tv to find this article because I do include a fair amount of excerpts from the press release study. So you can, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating study to, to look into to see what mice might, might tell us about the, the, the primary driver 
towards voluntary interaction. Republicans line up to tighten background check laws. We must appease the left on gun control. Bear in mind, folks, when I use the terms left and right on this show, that I am using it in the common usage language of uh, the predominance of the folks around me. Some of you, such as me, may have a nuanced understanding of what left and right actually might mean. But regardless, I'll simply use left and right for convenience sake. So what do you do when you have all the laws in place to ostensibly prevent a disaster, but the laws fail to prevent the disaster anyway? Well, if you're Senate Majority John Cornyn, Senate Majority Whip John Cornyn, you promise to tighten up those laws, which is what he is doing in proposing a bill that will tighten up gun laws. Cornyn said of the bill that this critically important information from the suspect's criminal history was not uploaded into the relevant background check databases, even though a federal law clearly requires that it be done. So I'm sure the Republicans are playing a game of appease the left and appease the sheep that buy into the gun fear hysteria created by the left and their partners in crime, the MSM, the progressive state media, PSM, to you and me. But watch carefully what gets added to this bill after it is introduced. Remember, the devil is always in the details. Will the U.S. claim IP space development? A question by Scientific American directed at the National Council of Space Executive Secretary Scott Pace suggests that NASA could be pondering claiming IP on SpaceX and other private company developments of heavy launch technology if the private company hopes or if the private companies hope to be contracted to build rockets for NASA. Now just be sure, just just to be sure that you understand who is speaking here. The National Council of Space or the National Space Council, is part of the U.S. President's cabinet. Now, this is in no think, this is, this, is, this, is, this is not a think tank group. This is the government speaking. Pace said, and I quote, There are some people who have talked about buying heavy lift as a service as opposed to owning and operating, in which case the government would, of course, have to continue to own intellectual property so it wasn't hostage to any one contractor. Of course they would, Mr. Pace. I tell you what, you let us know when you get that big black boot out of your mouth. You must be sucking on when you say such idiotic things as that. So we have a Derp Award candidate here. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a Derp Award candidate. Sock Gen CA CEO says Bitcoin's anonymity will kill. Well, will kill it. And, and of course, uh, he's, he's wrong. Uh, the latest anti-digital currency corporate bigwig to come out swinging against Bitcoin is the Sock Gen CEO, Frederick Wieda. Widea, I don't know how you pronounce that. I'll say Widea, who revealed more about himself than anything he was saying about Bitcoin when he predicted Bitcoin would be crushed by governments because of its anonymity. Now, clearly, Widea doesn't know much about Bitcoin because if he did, he would know that digital currency is not actually anonymous at all. But hey, never let a good fear mongering get in the way of the facts. Students. In a high school, well, students and teachers together are going to see their 3D printed satellite head off into outer space. A satellite created by Northwest Nazarene University in Caldwell High School will soon be headed to space after it was selected for NASA's CubeSat launch initiative. Their 3D printed satellite, MakerSat O, will be launched this week aboard a Delta II rocket. It will begin sending data to Earth two hours after launch, if all goes as planned. Students will be able to access the data on an app installed on their smartphones. Now, this is a, this is a really big, big story. $280 million of Ethereum locked up after code error in popular wallet. With the stroke of a few keys, hundreds of thousands of Ethereum users saw their ETH locked out from them, and the fix could require a hard fork. 
The wallets affected are multi-signature wallets. And if you recall, these multi-signature wallets were also the target of a $32 million hack back in July of this year. The fix to close that hack has led to this new problem. A problem created, it seems, and I'm going to give you a very, uh, very, very cliff noty version of what happened here. And it may be too cliff noty, but <laughs> trying to keep it simple. When Develbs199 somehow accidentally became the sole owner of the multi-signature wallets under parity. The response by Develops 199 was to quickly kill the contract, which effectively locked everyone else out of the parity wallet. And that's there's the, the oh knows kitty made an appearance on the show, and justifiably so. UPS could be paperless thanks to the blockchain. UPS is joining forces with the Blockchain and Trucking Alliance, that's Blockchain and Trucking Alliance, to create a blockchain-based current based system that will enable it to do away with its paperwork altogether. The UPS Director of Enterprise Architecture, Linda Weekland, said the technology has the potential to increase transparency transparency and efficiency among shippers, carriers, brokers, consumers, vendors, and other supply chain stakeholders. So that's cool, I guess. What do you guys think of that? Write me at pg at iState.tv and let me know what you think about uh, totally going paperless here. Is that a good thing? Bad thing? A little bit of both? Aquatic drone could create drone rentals for operators thousands of miles away. A new aquatic drone by Aquatabox, Aquabotics, is promising to challenge the underwater drone market with live remote control integration that can be run from any browser-based modem device. Aquatic drone operators can take their turn operating drones on the other side of the world. The product could potentially create a whole new market for researchers and virtual tourists alike who could rent a drone from thousands of miles away. And that's, if you're watching the video, that is what it looks like there, the Aquata Box. Humans suck as models for robots. Just take that sentence in, folks. If you're expecting... The bestest and brightest robots to look like us, well, you might be in for a rude surprise. An editorial in fizz.org points out that the human form is just, frankly, not an efficient form for the bestest and the brightest and the kick-assiest robots to adapt. So suck on that, humans, and welcome your oh, robot overlords who will not be made in your image. And our last story for the day on the iNews Digest for November 8th, 2017. Disney boycott of LA Times triggers counter boycott by other media. Disney decided to boycott the LA Times from attending its film screenings in retaliation of a report the paper did on their business operation. Turns out, the other media is not so keen about that, and they've taken to boycotting Disney's film screenings until the boycott on the L.A. Times is lifted. After less than a day, the ban has ended, and Disney is no longer boycotted. So if you go to iState.tv, you find this story, you'll see an excerpt from CNN, which details the end of the ban, and then you'll see an excerpt from MSN, which details exactly how the, the 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 Disney ban first took place and then the boycott that followed. And there you go, folks. That's it. This has been your iNews Digest of the Day, Wednesday, November 8th, 2017.